from the Eastern Cape to KwaZulu-Natal. The Umlazi cinema used to be a lot more than a bioscope. Here, the community holds school concerts, musical performances, meetings, vigils, and memorial services. It was during a memorial services for assassinated human rights lawyer Victoria Mkenge that Nkata members attacked and killed 15 mourners. The police and the military did nothing to intervene. Nanti Stain tells the story. During August 1985, the townships around Durban were in flames. Umlazi was no exception. Here, on the night of 8 August in the Umlazi cinema, a memorial service was held for Victoria Mnenge. A human rights lawyer and community leader, she was loved and respected until she was shot and hacked to death by four unknown men outside her house a week before. David Gaza knew Victoria and her husband Griffiths well. He was a great man. And Victoria Mkeng as well, because they were both attorneys. They were just attorneys of the people. Um, money was not a first thing to Mrs. Mkeng. But her duty was to complete and help that poor somebody. Then, then number two, she's just thinking about the money. I mean, they were, they were very unique. Very, very unique, both of them. Very, very unique. But all of a sudden, she was brutally killed by a known man, as the papers are saying. David Gaza was the chairman of the Umlazi Residents Association at that time and organized the memorial service at the Umlazi Cinema. The cinema was managed by Josiah Lamini. They told the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in Durban this week what happened at the prayer service. There were people along the road from the executive hotel down to this place. These people were armed. I didn't know why they are armed. When I came in here, I found a crowd of people for us. up this way, right in front. When we gathered there, in thousands, the police and soldiers were there in, in, in hundreds. Now, we didn't know who called them. And we didn't know why they are here. Because this is just an ordinary memorial service. Uh, we were here, with the, the people noticed that uh, Ms. Sabello was here, the member of the government of, uh, of Inkata. He was here instructing these people to come and uh, bombard us. Came inside the hall with three guns. One this side, one that side, and the big one, he was holding the big one. He came inside the hall, and uh, his people were following him. Then they started hitting everybody with their no carry, their spears, poking, doing this. Then I saw a terrible thing. I saw people dying like flies in front of when my eyes. came here, then they eyes. hit him. After they hit him, then the, that is when then he tried to step me inside, and fortunately he could not. The floor, I can feel that I'm walking on the pool of blood. Because no, it was not one person or two person who was just lying down. Two, Fifteen persons died instantly. Surprised. That night, just in the I'm not afraid, but uh, I was swearing in my mind, you devils, why do you come and kill us here? What for? Today the cinema is a bricked up cavern. Bits of glass on the ground recall that there were once windows and doors reflecting the throng of people arriving for an evening's entertainment or discussion. Now it stands empty as a monument to horror. Fifteen people died and the police made no attempt to prevent their death. Those that survived to tell the story 
think perhaps the police and the military have done even worse. No police came to help us in any way. Even after the event, no, no one came. They were deliberately and intentionally giving Inkata a chance to kill us.